100 Thieves actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to look at their new flagship keyboard, which I said no. It didn't mean anything, right? I was just busy doing some other dumb thing, right? I didn't think much of it. But then a few days later, I get another email, this time from a viewer telling me to review this atrocity of a keyboard they'd seen online. So I checked out the link they sent me and it turns out it's the new 100 Thieves keyboard. Huh. I read through the listing, right? And nothing really catches my eye until I see done, done, done the price. And magically, my schedule got a lot clearer. Huh. This is the 100 Thieves High Ground Summit 65 Jujutsu Kaisen Edition. It is a 65% keyboard and oh my goodness, there is so much I could say about this keyboard. However, High Ground has kindly saved me the effort of making a page of content by describing the keyboard themselves, <clears throat> calling it a flagship keyboard with die sub PBT keycaps, featuring a full CNC aluminium case, gasket mounted design, and the world's first graphic switches. Hmm. Honestly, the description just keeps going, right? It's pop swappable, it's got an aluminium plate, silicone dampening, free loop stabilizers, and free loop switches, and just so many more things that I really hope it lives up to the high praise they've given it. Here we go. Yeah. The Summit 65 features a two-piece aluminium case with thick top bezels, a front lip, four rubber feet, recessed USB port, acrylic panels for side glow, and what they are calling a weighted brass medallion on the bottom case, which for normal people is just a brass weight. The external case finish, namely the anodization, is pretty consistent, smooth to the touch with no obvious color mismatch or anime streaking. But the finish on the brass weight was kind of weird. At first I thought it had this kind of brushed finish, but further inspection I could see what looked more like circular machining marks left on the weight along with machining marks inside the text engraving, which ultimately looked a bit scratched, you know, kind of cheap. I could also feel the seam between the top and bottom case, enough to tell me that they weren't aligned properly. And so at this point, I decided to open the case and see what was going on. Um, I regret doing that. The first thing that confused me when I flipped this keyboard over was that there were only four screws on the bottom row of the case. Now, you might be wondering, that seems pretty normal, right? Um, yes, until you realize that there are four screws holding together the end higher case. A, a bit confused, I began unscrewing and surprise surprise, the keyboard did come apart. It turns out the case fixes together via four screws and two clips, which I've genuinely never seen before. Like on one hand, it does make the case slightly easier to open, but on all the other hands, why? Having only four screws to undo saves you a minute out of your day, but are we seriously at the point where four screws, fine, five screws is just no, that is that is so unbelievably inhumane of you. <laughs> five is gonna be four, it's gonna be four, and it's five. And with these particular clips that also don't have any way of tightly locking or screwing into anything, they've introduced much wider tolerances, which makes the alignment pins they have in the top case, or really any alignment, redundant, but that's far from my biggest issue with this. Given there's no actual way of tightening that top side down with something like Oh, I don't know, screws. There is a pretty big difference in the amount of compression between the top and the bottom case of this keyboard. Like I'm not I'm not being silly or facetious here. I can, I'm really not pulling all that hard, but I can literally pull the case like a millimeter open with my fingers. You're not supposed to be able to do that. I reasoned that the effect of this on the sound and feel of the keyboard wouldn't be that noticeable. And this is far from a scientific test, but I tried compressing down the top case. The difference in sound. is audible. At this point, I decided to investigate the internals further, checking out how the keycaps and switches performed, and what I found was, well, yeah. put the top case aside and remove the keycaps, and you have the world's first graphic switches. I was confused too, um, but it turns out these switches feature a topographic design on the switch housing, which is actually quite cool, but what in the x-ray vision are you doing? When am I ever gonna see this? Like, when am I ever gonna appreciate this? Oh, wait, wait, I know what it is. I know what it is. You sneaky, sneaky guys at 100 Thieves. Because you're not spending as much time unscrewing your keyboard, you could allocate that time to staring at the switches off. <sighs> Just so beautiful. That is genius, not really. I mean, I guess you'd be able to see them if the keycaps were transparent, but they're not. They are very much opaque OEM profile die sub PPT keycaps with a singular graphic die sublimated on 
top of them. And in this case, it's the main characters from the anime Jujutsu Kaisen. It's a pretty good show. I'm, I'm pretty happy for season two. The keycaps are eggshell smooth under your fingers. The print is sharp, the colors are vibrant, and there's no bleeding around the edges like you see in some of the cheaper keycap sets. However, this is not this. The issue here is that the light from your screen and or room are casting shadows onto the keycaps, meaning there's way more contrast between the sides of the real keycaps than the ones that you have in that perfect little image. Meaning the image doesn't look as good in person, but also assumes that you're looking at the keyboard from the optimal angle, which is top down. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's assume you're not a lunatic and you're just looking at the keyboard, you know, sitting down in your desk normally. What does it look like then? Imagine you're looking at an image on your phone, right? And then you tilt your phone 60 degrees. What happens is that our boy Yuji ain't looking so hot. I'm of the personal opinion that any keyboard feature that has you look down at your keyboard is kind of silly, but assuming you need to look at it anyways, where are the letters? There are no legends here. They've just been side printed, and on this particular model, in a silvery gray, which I can't state this enough, is very, very, very difficult to see when you look down at it. And it gets even worse if you wanna turn on any of those lighting settings. Honestly, the only time you should ever be looking down at this keyboard is to appreciate those graphic switches with your freaking x-ray vision. It's a work of art. I wouldn't take the makeup the switches so much if they actually functioned well as switches but our Geo Switch is linear and pre-lubed. Sure. The springs have a good coating of lube and are virtually silent, but there's about one drop of lube, right, that is only visible on the world's most powerful microscope on the entire switch and housing rail. It's dry. Now, there's a varying amount of lube on the stem legs and the actual copper leaves, but there isn't much consistency of the application on this switch. What this means is that whilst smooth enough, if you type fast enough, half the switches feel dry and the other half have this really sluggish kind of high drag feeling. I don't like it. Combined with a not very solid push feel, a longer but light bottom out spring weight, slightly shorter key travel, and just a really dull bottoming and topping out sound, these switches are, and I know that th that's a subjective thing, but they're not, they're not, they're not great. They're not great. Fortunately, the PCB does have kale hot top sockets, so you can get rid of them, but for a keyboard of this price, now assuming I did get rid of the keycaps and the switches, I'd be left with the s Oh god. Yeah. Pre-lubed the Rock V2 screw and stabilizers. Oh goodness. We've heard that one before, haven't we? And uh these actually really good. Yeah, the 2U stabilizers have a generous coating of grease in basically all the right places, wherever you have plastic or metal collision in the stabilizers. And the result is a smooth set of rattle-free stabilizers with virtually no ticking. The spacebar had about the same application, but my wire came in really bent. Crazy thing about this is that there still was basically no ticking. Why? High ground, I've pre installed a bit of foam underneath the wire. That really helps to mitigate what would have normally been ticking, resulting from the difference in the height between where the stabilizer clips into the housing. Here's a sound test. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I can't quite give you a full sound test of this keyboard before we've discussed its uh, acoustic features. Ooh, yeah. Our aluminum. You've missed a couple letters there. Our aluminium plate reflects vibrant RGB, right, as I hope it would, um, and makes any switch sound crisp. Any switch? <clears throat> no. If anything, it's not gonna be this stamped, cheapo aluminium plate, but this thick, thick silicon plate foam that's doing all of the work of dampening any untoward sounds. The plate itself attaches to the case via gasket mount, a phrase that in my own opinion has literally lost all meaning given how much variance there is in this single mount. These particular mounting tabs along with the pour on foam strips are rather shallow. It's funny to me that in this version they're using the updated softer pour on to you know create a softer typing feel but the actual result is It's not the hardest bottom out feel, right? Most of your pre-built tray mount keyboards probably beat it, but it is a world away from being a soft typing feel. And in terms of the sound, well, you can hear it. Combination of the switches, plate foam, and the weirdly hollowed out case design that has a larger cavity at the top compared to the bottom just makes this board feel and especially sound so empty.
It's so dull. Honestly, that for me summarizes this entire keyboard. On paper, it promises a lot. And honestly, to somebody coming from like a $40 keyboard, it's probably a better experience. But in reality, it's hard to not feel like it's fashion over function. Would I be disappointed if I bought this keyboard for a hundred and something dollars? Maybe not, but at its actual price of 300 United States dollars? Absolutely yes. I mean, no, I mean, you know what time it is. Oh, it's just, this is the best thing I've ever looked at.